hello i welcome you once again to put this online tutorials today's lesson will be looking at the sensory development senses jumpstart the brain and muscles into action but because it is more difficult for a parent to plot or measure sensory development muscle or motor development is more well known with muscles it is easy he can either do it or he can't. The road to sensory development is an adventure of discovery. This is when a child discovers how things feel by using different parts of the body, from touching with the mouth to touching with the hands to feeling grounded with the feet. The body responds to gravity and movement and how to cross not one but three midlands. Some smells and tastes are pleasant, while others are not, and how that affects the emotions. The ears are early honing system and crucial for speaking and making friends. The eye are the bosses of the senses, but still need the other senses to be strong and do their job well. The sensory diet. As a parent, you are very aware that you need to ensure that your child has a balanced diet. Five fresh fruit and vegetables a day are what we are aiming for. But how many of us even consider that we need to give them a varied sensory diet as well? Creating a sensory rich environment for our children will help them strengthen their bodies and brains. Mature thinking and learning are based on neural pathways that develop as a child masters physical coordination balance and skilled movement yet many parents view child play as an outdated activity we live in a digital age let them master computers and electronic games so that they may conquer the universe how wrong are we we need to to get our children back to the games we played back to exploring the three-dimensional world where they get muddy and run and jump in puddles what we as parents need to do is to focus on developing and maintaining a balanced sensory diet as children develop and grow we need to relax and think about incorporating sensory experiences into their day-to-day -day lives a child can be hyper or hypersensitive to touch both instances affect learning and the way we interact with people not everyone realizes that we have internal senses which are called the near senses this play a vital role in our development especially in the early years movement is the only way to stimulate this internal sense smell and taste are interlinked they expose your children to different smell and let them explore different tastes even once you don't like emily is, is is sensitive to the texture of her body and that could be why she is considered a fussy eater seeing and hearing are the senses that pose the most problems later if we don't process what we see and hear we experience auditory or visual processing problems that may lead to learning difficulties at school so this week don't just think five fresh fruit and vegetables think five sensory activities that will enrich your children's learning experiences Help. the touch a child needs to touch and to explore to be able to learn babies and toddlers learn best through touch smell and taste simply because their more advanced senses of hearing and sight are not yet fully developed a baby's hearing is already developed at birth but it takes more time and concentration to make sense of what he hears than it does when he touches smells and tastes using his hands and mouth learning by experience how does your child know what hot means if he has never experienced it 
Most toddlers learn the meaning of hot, for example, by touching the stove or your hot tea. Now he has a clear understanding of hot. And in all likelihood, he won't want to repeat the experience. And yet the one thing we seem to tell toddlers on a regular basis is, do not touch. But how can he know what to touch and what not to touch if he has never experienced the sensation of the sequence? As an adult, you already have a vast database of previous touch experiences that allow you to look at something and access if it is hard, soft or prickly. Little ones do not yet have that data. It is still needs to be developed and that means that you, the caring parent, need to provide as many tactile experiences as possible. What is the function of the skin? The function of the skin is to protect, to bond, help from a relationship with self, form a body map and self-image, form a relationship with the environment, determine body position in relation to other body parts and space, develop spatial orientation, develop balance, develop motor skills, discriminate and tell where he ends and the world begins. Feel safe and secure. Don't make battle of everything. Choose your battles and make sure you win. As I said, touch is primitive hearing and primitive sight, the tactile system. Cells in the skin send information about touch, pain, temperature, and pressure to the brain. It is through touch and not looking that a child learns about shape, size, weight, and texture. It is also through touch that a child learns to discriminate between sensations such as light or heavy, cool or warm, rough or smooth, and thick or thin, for example. But before a child can tell sensations apart, he first needs to feel safe in his own skin. Because the skin's first task is to keep the child together so he can feel safe and secure enough before he, before he ventures out. The skin is like the protective horns of our developmental house. The child will only make friends once he feels safe and secure enough in himself and his skin. Your child also needs to see with his hands. Allow him to touch. Touch your face your shampoo, the cereal, the TV, the dog, the grass, the glass vase, and even to some degree anyway, heat. Instead of saying don't touch, rather say can you feel it is cold, heavy and made of glass? It can break. It is mine. Please leave it alone. And mean it if it is valuable, rather place it on the top shelf or pack it away. Touch is all about making contact, first physically, then emotionally, then socially, and finally mentally. This means that touch is the first building block in developing academic skills. Touch is important, but so are boundaries. Allow a child to explore with his mouth and hands, and do not hesitate to say no to what is potentially dangerous or inappropriate. The word no teaches boundaries and boundaries make children feel safe. Just think of a rose bush, the more you prune it, the more it blooms. The same holds true for your child. The more consistently you set reasonable boundaries, the more he blooms. Cracks in the development of smell and taste. Watch out for these cracks in the development of smell and taste. Avoid latching and feeding breastfeed or a bottle. Misbehaving after cleaning materials have been used, avoiding eating in certain places, avoiding foods that have a strong smell, hypersensitivity around the lips, a heavy or lazy tongue, the mouth hangs open, dribbling, sleeping poorly, sensitivity to food with different textures, prolonged thumb sucking or sucking hair or clothes, Delayed speech development. Those are the cracks in the development of smell and taste. How do smell and taste influence development? Being under of or over responsive to smell and taste will influence eating habits, 
affect relationships with other children, may impact on potty training. Try to develop discrimination and perception simultaneously by naming everything your child smells and tastes and categorizing the taste sweet, salt, sour or bitter. Exaggerate the sniffing action as children often blow instead of inhaling when smelling. Ask your child whether the taste is nice or not so nice. Smell and taste. You need to taste. Discrimination means telling tastes and flavors apart and this happens long before the taste perception. It means being able to determine similarities in and differences between various tastes. The taste bands can only interpret four different tastes. Sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Gastatory perception, on the other hand, is the ability to recognize, name, and interpret information from the taste organs on the tongue. Olfactory perception is the brain's ability to recognize and interpret information from the smell organs. These receptors are located in the roof of the nose and pick up chemical traces in the air. Smell discrimination is the ability to determine similarities in and differences between various smells. Smell and taste are interlinked. You just have to have a severe cold to realize that food doesn't taste the same and this may even decrease your appetite. Smell is also closely linked to emotion. For example, a stranger wearing a particular perfume may remind you of someone else. Smells can evoke a good or a bad feeling. Ears and hearing. During the process of hearing, receptors in the ear are stimulated by air waves and send sound waves to the brain, where the waves are interpreted. But before sound waves can travel to the brain, the inside senses have to combine the information from all the senses to create one stream of information. This process is called sensory integration. Sensory integration means that if your child hears the jingle from the ice cream cart in the street, his inside senses need to take the sound, determine from which side it came, link it to the saliva secreting in his mouth when he thinks about an ice cream, and then send all the information to the brain. The interpretation of sound in the brain is called sensory perception. Sensory integration and perception need to take place before a child can learn to speak properly. Children with recurring ear infections, auditory hearing, processing difficulties and hearing impairment may experience delays in speech and language skills. How can you deal with hearing problems? Uh, number one, the auditory processing. Auditory processing problems mean the structure of the ear is fine. In other words, the child can hear but it's battling to determine which sounds are important and which sound must be ignored and to remember what is heard and organize this in the same sequence again. The hearing impairment. A hearing impairment may mean problems with the structure of the ear that result in hearing loss in the sound decibels. Auditory sensitivity. A child who experiences auditory sensitivity has difficulty screening out background sounds and may appear to have attention and concentration problems because the sounds create a traffic jam in the ears. Auditory hypersensitivity. The ears of a child with auditory hypersensitivity are heard by loud noises and this can cause anxiety. He would typically cover his ears when the dog is barking or even when the toilet is flushing. The ear is functional 24-7, which is why it is very difficult to give the ears a rest. What is the function of the ears? 
It is the function of the ears to receive the auditory information, tune in to relevant sounds, learn to tune out irrelevant sounds, development of a sense of rhythm and timing, orientate yourself in space through sound, assist in emotional and social development, develop interaction through speech and language skills, identify potential danger, develop auditory perception. The cracks in auditory development may be delayed reaction to sounds or instructions, oversensitive to loud or sudden noises, doesn't know where to look to find the source of sound, speaks loudly, delayed speech and language, frequent, frequently ask what, unable to follow sequence of instruction given. Sensory integration combined information from the skin, mouth, nose, ears, ears, eyes, and inside senses. The sensory perception interpretation of multisensory information by telling them apart and giving them names. Eyes and vision. Vision is the most dominant of all the senses and yet it takes years before all its pathways are firmly in place. The eyes capture visuals about the world around us and send them to the brain of for interpretation the eyes rely heavily on the other senses for multisensory concrete experiences from which to draw memories and make sense of the visual images eye movements are sensory and necessary for eye control the eyes should be able to focus on one object and follow it as it moves like any other muscles in the body, eye muscles need to be developed, which is why a mobile dangling over a baby's head is a clever piece of equipment. The eyes tire easily from sameness, therefore a varied mobile is better for visual development than one that simply hangs in one place. The types of visual experiences and visual motor activities a child engages in during the first few years are important in shaping reading and writing abilities years later. If the eyes don't work well together and do not send the correct information to the brain, the brain might turn a blind eye. What is the function of the eyes? Eye teaming, binocular vision, each eye focuses on a different part of an object. The left eye focuses on the right side and the right eye focuses on the left side. Binocular vision is only possible when the two eyes work together as a team. Convergence. When the visuals from each eye combines with that of the other, this is known as convergence. Convergence must be fully developed for the child to perceive one clear picture. When the eyes do not work together to converge, the brain receives more than one image of the same object. Accommodation. Clarity in the sharpness of an image that makes it easier for a child to perceive an object. When the eye manages to adjust the focus, this is known as accommodation. Difficulties with accommodation can affect convergence and vice versa. Tracking. Visual tracking is the ability to follow a moving object with both eyes. Directional awareness. Directional awareness is the result of a well-developed body awareness, body map, and vestibular system. This provides a child with a sense of center from which he can automatically differentiate forwards from backwards, up and down, left from right, and start from finish. Understanding the terms. The following are some of the terms you may encounter when reading about 
or researching visual development. Number one, the visual discrimination. Visual discrimination is the ability to tell the difference in shape, size, and color. Number two is the visual memory, which is the ability to remember and recall a visual image. Number three is the depth perception, which is the ability to judge the distance from one object to another. Then following is the high coordination, which is the ability to do something with your hands guided by the use of the eyes. And lastly, eye foot coordination, which is the ability to do something with your feet guided by your eyes. Cracks in the visual development. Watch, watch out for these cracks in visual development. A child doesn't crawl on all fours, but bear hogs or bumps, hops. Unable to cross the midline, poor eye-hand coordination, eyes jump to the midfield when tracking from left to right, head can't turn independently on the body, the arm and the leg follow. Mirror writing.